want to talk about that Mike Gusecki signing that happened early yesterday morning because when I was at work today, I was thinking about it and I was thinking about it all day. And the more I thought about it, the more I liked it. What's up, everyone? It is Josh here from No Buts About It, and I got the Joe Knows tank on today because Joe knows everything's going to be okay in free agency. We're, we're going to be all right. Bengals are making some moves. They're making some moves as I film this video, but uh, I'll, I'll make a video about the moves they're making right now, and I've got a few others lined up in the queue here. But first, I want to talk about that Mike Gusecki signing that happened early yesterday morning because when I was at work today, I was thinking about it and I was thinking about it all day. And the more I thought about it, the more I liked it. The reason I love this signing is because I think this is the perfect pairing with Drew Sample, who the Bengals just extended for three years. And I know there are some Bengals fans out there who like hate Drew Sample for some reason, but I'm telling you, this move makes sense when you consider what both of these guys bring to the table. Mike Gusecki was a 2018 rookie drafted in the second round by the Miami Dolphins, where he played with for most of his career before reaching free agency uh, season before last. And he uh, was a huge topic. He had been good in Miami, and a lot of teams wanted him. Bengals fans wanted him. He ended up signing with New England, a four and a half million dollar deal in New England. He only had 244 yards and two touchdowns. He averaged 8.4 yards per catch. Not great numbers, but let's consider some things here. He was getting the ball thrown to him by Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi, depending on the game. Uh, he also was splitting snap counts with Hunter Henry, who was much heavily the favored tight end in that offense Mac Jones preferred him uh, Bailey Zappi preferred him as well so I don't think that this was a great situation for Mike Gusecki to begin with uh, we've seen him put up 700 yard games when he was in Miami with uh, Tua and Ryan Fitzpatrick and that whole thing but uh, I think we can get back to those 700 numbers with Mike Gusecki catching the ball from Joe Burrow the reason I think that this is such a good signing is because one of the chief complaints Bengals fans have with Drew Sample is that he can't catch the ball. He sucks. He can't catch the ball. Why is he on the team? Why are we extending this guy? I'll tell you why they're extending him. He is one of the best blocking tight ends in the NFL. And blocking is something that tight ends don't get credit for enough anymore in today's NFL. Everyone wants their tight end to be like Travis Kelsey. And that's simply not what the position is meant to be. Even this last season, Drew Sample was one of the better tight ends. I think through week nine, he was still PFF's number one ranked blocking pass blocking tight end. That is phenomenal. Let's keep that up. Yes, Drew can't catch, but that's why they brought in a guy who may not necessarily block. In fact, Mike Gusecki isn't even really a true tight end in the traditional sense of the position. Drew Sample lines up in line with the offensive line a lot. He plays that traditional tight end position. The Bengals had Drew Sample. They knew they had Drew Sample. There's a very good chance they're going to bring back Tanner Hudson as well. So they've got those guys. They know what they have there. With Mike Gusecki, and uh, this is credit to Joe Goodberry. He had uh, already put this information out there. He'd gone back and figured out how many snaps he took from each position. Mike Gusecki lines up in the slot 71.2% of the time, wide out 18.6% of the time, and he only lines up in line in the traditional tight end role 10.2% of the time. So what I like about this is the Bengals are getting a guy who not only can be a receiver, but could actually solve a lot of issues for the Bengals that we were concerned about as fans. So let's look at this. What was the one concern a lot of fans had when it became apparent that T. Higgins might get traded, that he wouldn't be here next year? It was, that means Jamar Chase is going to get double teamed. Well, if Mike Gusecki is essentially basically playing the role of a giant wide receiver, the role that basically Travis Kelsey plays to a uh, greater degree, but still in that role, 
if Mike Gusecki is lining up in the slot, that means that the linebackers are going to have to cover him. They're going to have to cover that middle, and he is a big guy. You're going to have to maybe at times have multiple guys on Mike Gusecki. Even if he's out there as just a uh, decoy and just to get Jamar or Yoshi or whoever else open, Mike Gusecki can do that job. He is going to bring attention from defenses. They're not going to just be able to leave him open. And he he is used to this role. This is the role he wants to play. If, for whatever reason, the pass rush gets through that offensive line that the Bengals are going to be building, that big fence, then Joe can just check the ball down to him. And he's a big guy. He'll catch it, and he might get some good yards after catch with it as well. He is used to that role. He's not like Drew Sample, who is meant to be a pure blocking tight end. Furthermore, this frees Drew Sample up a little bit as well. This allows Drew Sample to kind of relax we can do some more personnel changes as well, run a bit different offense. Uh, Drew Sample only has to be in on blocking. He doesn't have to go out for these passes anymore because we can just put Mike Gusecki in. They might put Drew out there as a decoy because if you're just switching out uh, Mike Gusecki and Drew, Lo or Drew Sample every time, it's going to become very obvious whether you're going to pass or you're going to need blockers. But... This opens up the playbook a lot, in my opinion, and the Bengals will be able to use the strengths of both of these tight ends that they have now signed, um, and this deal is great. One year, $3.5 million. The Patriots paid $4.5 million when we wanted him last season, so basically the Bengals waited a season. Joe Burrow got hurt anyway, so we weren't really likely to do anything anyway, but we waited a season and essentially got a $1 million discount because he went to New England and wasn't successful there, in my opinion, due to the poor quarterback play. I mean, look, their starting quarterback at the time is now the backup in Jacksonville, and they traded a late-round pick for him. This could also – I think the Bengals will still bring in another wide receiver, but this could help alleviate the loss of Tyler Boyd, along with moving Jamar Chase to the slot more often. Tyler Boyd was a great slot receiver that the Bengals offense had. They lost him. Uh, while well, he hasn't signed anywhere else yet, uh, he has not yet signed back with the Bengals, and it's expected that they're going to let him go in free agency. Um, I, I think – we, we said that he lines up 71.2% of the time in the slot. That is going to help alleviate that loss um, in this new offense that the Bengals are building. That Dan Pitcher, the brand new offensive coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals, is working to build. This is a very interesting move. I'm very excited about it. And the more I think about it, the more I like it. I think a lot of people are tired of that revolving door. And I understand, you know, going from CJ to Hayden to Irv Smith, now Mike Gusecki. Now, Mike Gusecki, I think he's a bigger name, um, and people are excited about that. And But that revolving door is getting tired. This doesn't prevent you from drafting a tight end. I think the Bengals need to enter week one with four tight ends on the roster. Uh, it should be, in my opinion, uh, Mike Gusecki, Drew Sample, Tanner Hudson, and then Ben Sinnott. And Ben Sinnott may go over Tanner Hudson as well. I really like Ben Sinnott. Ben Sinnott is a guy who is a good blocker, but he can also make athletic catches when needed. Um, he's also likely to be a late round, uh, probably day two, maybe early day three pick as well. So I think that um, you could get some value there. I know people are sold on Brock Bowers. I know everyone wants Brock Bowers. They all want that golden goose. But I'm telling you guys, you don't need to draft a tight end in the first round. Very often it doesn't work out, and there's no need to draft a tight end in the first round. There is much more value to be had, especially in this draft class at the right tackle position. You can get some good value at that pick 18 at the right tackle position, um, or if all the right tackles are somehow gone, defensive tackles would also be available, and that could be a move that the Bengals make. But – I think that this move is going to open up things for the Cincinnati Bengals. Irv Smith Jr. kind of uh, shut down that tight end position until Tanner Hudson became uh, this like kind of light 
Um, I think some of that might have been because both him and Jake Browning were on the practice squad together, so they had that chemistry. That's yet to be seen. I, I like Tanner Hudson. I'd like to have him back for depth. But don't don't knock this Mike Gusecki signing just yet. I think this is a plan that goes beyond what we're going to see in the stat sheet. I think if you really sit there and watch Mike Gusecki, you're going to see what the Bengals are doing, and I think you're going to see what the Bengals are doing with Drew Sample, and this pairing is perfect. So if you agree, let me know down in the comments. If you don't agree, let me know down in the comments as well, and uh, tell me why. Let me know, what am I missing? What do you think the Bengals should do? Do you think the Bengals should still go out and free agency and sign another tight end? I think this was a great deal for a great tight end in a great situation, and this will help the Bengals make the playoffs once again this season.